So I guess this panel is about how we all got started. So, so you started first before any of us. I got a bit of a head start. Um, I started with Funimation in in nineteen ninety eight when a lot of you were born, and uh, <laughs> at the time I got a I I had gotten a call or a text message from a friend of mine. Uh, who I was friends with in college, and she was one of four people who worked up at Funimation. Her name was Carly Hunter, and she was a buddy of mine in college, sort of. I knew her through her husband or something like that, and um, we ended up, she, I always used to joke with her because her job was to paint out all the panties and stuff in the original Dragon Ball. <laughs> and I always told her, I kept going, please, give me the footage, give me the footage. Um, she never would, but she told me, hey, they're having these auditions at Funimation for voices, and you do that kind of stuff, right? I'm like, okay, yeah. So I left astronomy class at the University of North Texas, and I went up and auditioned for them. And about a month later, I got a, a call that I was cast as Yamcha and Igor in this little tiny movie called Sleeping Princess and Devil's Castle. It was a Dragon Ball movie. And um, it was really crude. I think we were recorded with like cassette tapes and a toaster and a microwave <laughs> ball. It was the most janky recording setup you've ever seen. And then a, a few weeks later, I got a call from the producer, Barry Watson. He said, hey, we're thinking about, uh, you know, doing some vo doing these voices down here instead of up in Canada. So uh, I'm just curious if y'all are interested in coming and helping us out doing some of the casting, some voice stuff for us. I'm like, heck yeah, how much does it pay? The list you've ever made in your life. Well, hell yeah, I'm interested. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, so I came out to work at Funimation working full time. I was, uh, I was a full time employee there making nothing, like minimum wage. But I was the only guy that had a deep voice. I was the only actor. So anytime a character would come up with a deep voice, or a, and it wouldn't fit one of the 11 people that were on the cast list at the time, I ended up getting another voice. Barry would be like, yeah, you do that one. How about you do another voice? And hey, that guy's big, you do him. So, um, and at the time, we, like, none of us really knew that Dragon Ball Z was even going to be that much of a success. Like, no, I didn't know that it was going to be a huge show. We just kind of knew that some people liked it. I, there were all these posters all over the walls. Um, of these characters with real spiky hair, and they're blonde, I'm like, which one's that one? And they're like, oh, that's Goku. Oh, which one's that one then? Oh, that's Goku as well. Oh, okay, well, which one's that one? That's Go. Okay, that one's Goku? No, that's Gohan. No, that... Okay, that one's Gohan. No, that's Goten. But they all look the same. They sound like that one. Well, that, that's Trunks. But anyway, uh, the years passed, we worked on Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, and then we got this one show called uh, Blue Gender, which was the first, like, uh, time we ever did anything that wasn't Dragon Ball. And that's when, and that's where she comes in. And then we'll just kind of go kind of in chronological order, and I'll come back later. Well, because you come back a lot later. Um, like every five minutes later. Uh, yeah, so I, I was in a play with Cynthia Krantz, who played Chi Chi on Dragon Ball Z at the time that this show comes up, Blue Ginger comes up, and we're in the show together. We've been friends for a while now. And I'm like literally at home in my sweats, like drinking, like putting the Oreo in the, the milk till the bubbles come out of it. Have any of you ever done that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, I'm like eating these Oreos. I get this call from Cynthia and she's like, hey, um, my friend Chris Abbott wants to know if you can come up and read for this new show because uh, they need low voiced actresses. And I'm like, well, I mean, I, and I have like the black between all of my teeth. I'm in the sweats. And I'm like, well, no, I can't come to an audition right now. And she's like, it's a voiceover audition. Like, they don't care. Brush your teeth, get in your car, come up here. So I did, and I was really, really, really nervous. Chris can tell you that. I always get nervous. I still get nervous now. And um, I think I get, I get nervous yeah. every time. Like, every time I'm like, I don't understand this. There's three beeps, and what do we do on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. I'm slow. Um, but I went in and I read for the part of Anna Kinder on Blue Gender, and um, that was the the first role I had in my work with the first director to work with was Chris. And the cool thing about working with Chris is you can suck really bad and he still makes you feel good. Like he's like, yeah, that was good. Except for just exactly like that, but totally different. <laughs> <laughs> but you still feel good about yourself. So, and I learned a lot from him and I worked on that show. The next show I worked on after that was I was mature on New Hockey Show. I did a little bit of Baba on Dragon Ball Z and was fired and then replaced. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. I didn't know what it was going to be. It went and back to the person that had it. It went back to the person that had it. 
<laughs> and then the next role after that. Because I didn't know she had it. And then, it was, <laughs> and then the next role after that that he directed me in was um, uh, he, he, Fruits Baskets. He was Justin Cook. Yeah, that was the next role I had. Justin. That was the first one. And that was in what? I guess that was that was ten years ago. That the AMA came in. Blue Ginger came in. What two years after you were doing Dragon Ball? Oh, year after. It's all a, it's all a big blur. Do it was either nine. Fast it came out just a little bit before that. Yeah, but we still only had like twenty actors at the time. Yeah, about twenty people were there. It was really weird. Well, there was, and I'm, and I'm sorry. We'll eventually get to Todd because Todd's story is like the like. Todd had to work harder, I think, than other people to actually do to get to where he is in Funimation. Because by the time Todd came into Funimation, there were like three, four hundred people on the cast list. So in order to get as many roles as Todd's got, you have to be pretty damn good. So uh, thanks, Seven. Hey, look, <laughs> we're both in the same boat. Uh, things have blown up since then. Since Fruits Basket, like it, Fruits Basket was an interesting time for Funimation because we had all these shows like Dragon Ball. And Yu Yu Hakusho, which were these big, goofy, kind of larger than life type shows, and then the, everything took this shift to more realistic type shows. And it, uh, Blue Gender, yeah, Blue Gender, Fruits Basket, and then some things started. Like, then they got a bunch of shows like that were really serious. Blah 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 blah. I'm just rambling. Okay, let's go on. Uh, well, uh, so okay, so they were. This is the golden age of Funimation, I guess. And they, this is still when you were in the building, the Kokenhauer building off the of Roof Snow, right? This is, was that the first location? Holiday Lane. Yeah. Okay, that was the first. Okay, so that's how I was teaching full time. I had gotten out of college, and I was doing. Uh, remember those bad movies I talked about? I was doing those, and because they were, you know, they were paying the bills, and I was uh, traveling and making bad movies, and uh, I needed something that was a little more steady. So I said, well, I'll teach. I'll use my theater degree and I'll go teach for a little bit. Well, I was teaching, but here's the funny thing about teaching. The principal doesn't like it when you use up all your sick days the first 10 days of school. <laughs> so typically what happens is when that happens, uh, you're, uh, you're not well liked on the staff. So, because I, I had to go do this, the Barney gig. I don't know if some of you have seen the Mr. Knickerbocker thing that pops up occasionally. You try to mock me with it. But um, I, did, I did that gig and it required me to leave school and do the, and when you leave school, kids forget, it's like Lord of the Flies, they, they get all, the cannibalism happens and they, they lose control in the classroom. So I came back and uh, it just wasn't working. I was doing my thing, but I was very stressed out because when I wasn't teaching, I was on set filming all night and then I'd wake up and you know, the darndest thing, school starts so early. Every day, it's crazy. So I was going there, and, and the kids weren't getting the best version of me. I wasn't getting the best version from them because I wasn't there. And so I got a call from Funimation to do a tiny role in um, Peach Girl. I did a very small role in Peach Girl. I don't, I don't really. I can, we can watch all 26 episodes, and I bet you I can find it, but I don't know it off the top of my head. And it's, uh, and then I went and did for Tyler. I did uh, Black Cat. I, I'm, uh, I did. Um, the bowl haircut, and I guess I got the role because I used to have a bowl haircut. As being an Asian child, you must go through that process. <laughs> and so I did that, um, and then I didn't hear from from anyone for a while. And uh, and I was like, okay, well that was a fun little stint. I was very nervous, and I think I met you up there. Uh, I ran into Chris, and I, and I didn't, I had not, I didn't know what anime was. I had watched Drag, uh, Vampire Hunter D, and that was it. So I didn't know that I was hobnobbing with uh, you know Vegeta. And, and all that cool stuff. And, um, I didn't know who these guys were. And I thought, like, wow, that guy's got a very deep, very <laughs> white voice. Very nice. Very nice. I've got to be better friends with you. Yes. <laughs> so 